that data protection is important. You already know that provide the privacy of your user's data. You also already know. But how to provide that within your application? And one of the possible techniques to provide that is using the RSA algorithm, one as asynchronous encryptation algorithms, which utilizes two different keys that are generated together. They are named also public key encryptation algorithm. So let's take a look how to employ this technique inside one Node.js program using the JavaScript programming language. Let's begin. I have set here the first part of the program very simple to we take a look together. It's focused on in the generation of the key pair. As you can see here, we have just one object created, one object from this class, node RSA, and this code is going to generate the two keys in the same method. So the object created by this constructor will have both the private key and the public key as the, the two keys are covered. And this generation of the two keys is one of the most complex process inside the algorithm programming because one key will be utilized to encrypt the message and the another key is utilized to decrypt the message. So these two keys have some kind of connection in which one key can undo what the other key have make. So we need to be able to extract these two key objects from this node RSA object and then use them separately in case we need that. Because the public key, as the nom said, most applications could have this information publicly available to any other application, to any other user, and the private key, the idea is that this key is available just by users or group with the messages, the content belong. So just this user will be able to decrypt the message that was delivered to him. So how to use that? Basically, you have first to install this package, the node RSA package, the link to download that is available below in the video description, but you can see here as well, this constant, just type this first line here and the, the code will be available in your program. Then you can just instantiate one object. There are a few constructor to node RSA key, okay? And this constructor here, we just inform the key size. And this size has to be a, a multiple uh, from eight. So I could double uh, this value to 124 or double that again to 248 and, and, and so on. So we generate the key and not just the key, the two keys together. But just generating that, the keys are not uh, easily visible and is not in a format is easy to track or to store. Then if you want to have access to the individual values of the key, we need to export that. And then we have this very important methods, export key. Then using them, we are going to be able to see and to do what, whatever we want with the public key and with the, pri the private key separated. You can see here, both keys being exported. So just let's execute that. And then here you can see when we print just the RSA key, we have here this long object full of numbers, a lot of properties you can see here below. Okay, but you can you cannot do uh, many things with that because these informations are important for the internal working, the internal functionality of this, this object here. But when we export the keys, you can see then in one string in base 64 format. So here is the private key, okay, beginning here and ending here, and then the public key available as well. As you can see, the public key is smaller as the private key, and you are already going to understand that. 
this point here so is just for creating new keys so a new user has registered himself in your application and then now we generate the one key pair and then we have to assign that to the user so next step we're going to see how to reuse one existing key using this object without generating new keys so as you have seen when we generated one new node RSI object we are were able to export here the private key from this this object and then now we are in another use case the user already exists and then he just log in in the application and wants to read their messages have access to their content and then it needs to use the existing keys we have previously assigned to them then for this purpose we instead of using this constructor here that will inform the the size of the keys that's going to be generated we just inform the key literal in the constructor and doing that what we have we have the same key we have previously generated so in this case i just took here from the console the the old value and assign that to a string of course it could be in a database it could be in a file it could be even in a usb token as people use it utilize it so it's just a certificate of the user and then doing that the keys will be again available so we can more than one time use the same key and i'm going just to execute this code now for you to take a look on that so let me just clear my console here my output and let's just run that again and then you can see here it has generated exactly this same private key we have utilized in the constructor so you can see here the, the ending of the string is exactly the same so it's a very important use case because now it's it's more utilized than the creation of new keys we just reutilize it existing keys every time this same user the concept of user here could be real one user or user or one application or one group of users a set of individuals that need to have access to one same content that is protected but uh, you can see here as well that we have utilized just the private key for generation of an, a key pair that already exists so I, I inform here just the private key that starts here and end here and they have not informed the public key but we have here printed the public key as well and why that that's because in this format here pkcs8 we are utilizing the public key is inside the private key so we just import the private key and the object already knows what is the public key related to it's so because the public key protection is not so important because as the name said it's public it has to be public available because it's just utilized for encryptation not for decryptation so that's why the public key does not need to be individually stored and utilized okay so now let's start the most interesting part that is the encryptation and the decryptation of messages And now let's have fun with that using the most nice methods from RSI node that is the encrypt method okay and also the decrypt method so this encrypt method will take the original content and will generate the encrypt result one result that make no no sense for users that just has access to this information and then in one later on moment not exactly in the same situation because a different use case we can just decrypt the content the idea is that i can only decrypt the content if i have the same key or the same key pair which allows it to encrypt the content of course to encrypt the content we need just the public key and when we are going to decrypt the content we need the private key here i'm going to do both in follow because our 
goal is just to present how the library works. Then in real situation, you need to write separated use case for each situation, but the code to do that is here presented. Here, we are going to then encrypt one content. This content here is a string to make that easy to test and to, to display to you. But it could be one file, any kind of binary content. People sometimes send me messages in previous videos asking, can I encrypt one PDF file, one Excel file? Yes, yes, you can. You just need to take the binary content of this file and set here in the encrypt method. Okay, so the example here is with one string, and, but you can use that for any other purpose. We have another videos in the channel that I take the file and set the file here. I can then post the links below as well. So um, now I have this original content here and we're going to encrypt that. When we encrypt one message, it's generated one binary content because it's the not generated one string content that's legible for user. No, it's, it's not legible. You cannot read that. It's, uh, so you are going to receive just that in a binary content. But if you want us to display that in the screen to store that in one in one field that works with ASCII characters, you can then um, convert that to, to base 6.4 and then have that in a string array. Okay, but just for display purpose, because, because internally the important stuff is the binary data generated by the encrypt method. And then later on, you can decrypt that using the same object, then you can decrypt that. It generated also one binary content, do, do you notice that? It's a, even when it's a text content, you decrypt that, it does not deliver to you exactly the string you have in the very beginning. It delivers to you one binary object. Uh, but the binary object you receive will have the same set of bytes we have originally here. But if you want to convert and to display that in a text manner, you need to convert the bytes to a string here using the UTF-8 char sets and then having the original content here. So let's execute and it will be easy to you to understand what I'm saying here. So let's just execute that again. Just a moment. It has tried to execute just a single line of my code, clear this output, and then we run again. And now you can see here, when we encrypt the content here in this line, the two, we have here the binary content of the encrypted value. And then here below, I have converted that in base 64. And then we have that in this text manner here. Okay, the same binary content is here. And later on, when we decrypt that, we have that also as a byte object, but we have that originally available again, then we can convert that in string using this method here in line 38. And then here we have the same original message as well available. Okay, so you can do that with any kind of content you want. You can encrypt that and later decrypt that. You see, it's not a complex library to utilize when you use want to use RSA algorithm in your Node.js application. So if you have watched the video until this point, it's because you are interested in system security in using encryptation algorithms. And here we have seen how to use the RSA algorithm using the Node.js programming language. Of course, knowing the algorithm, knowing how to generate the keys, knowing how to extort the keys values and how to encrypt and decrypt messages is just the first step when you want to employ this kind of technologies inside one application. Okay, one of biggest challenges in this process is the usage of this kind of infrastructure for store these keys. We have public keys that has to be public available to users. So independently of user or application, you can just take, uh, make some kind of carry and retrieve this value. But the private key, it really should be available just for the user itself. So it needs to be inside of one special kind of file 
or it could be even in a shared place like a cloud but then you need to encrypt this private key with some information just the user know like one password you can then take the private key encrypt that with some kind then of symmetric encryptation something like that or or not or you just take the private key set that inside a token set that inside one kind of id file and then just the user will have access to that because if the private key is not private the security of your algorithm will not be so secure everyone that has access to the keys will have means to decrypt the messages right so it's not what you want if you don't have one proper place to store your private keys some one proper strategy to store your private keys your public key encryptation solution will not be so safe as it has to, to be okay and moreover what we think what we say a user is could be really different user different people that has access to your application they could be user each user could have one individual set of, of key pairs but could be also applications you want two applications that communicate each other and this should be secure you don't want that if third parties take access to, to the content these applications share each other have access to the plain content then you could generate two key pairs one for each application and these applications change messages based in these in these keys so when we said in this video the concept concept of user it's just one generic term for who these certificates are assigned to so thank you for watching and see you next time